um, you know, comments on infrastructure and whatever, and a lot of what you're talking about was, is DPW related, obviously. This doesn't really affect the amount, Fred, but I think if, as we present this year's budget, if we can make an effort to better organize the roads, drainage, sewer elements in the operating budget, such right now they're all over the place, and, and try, you know, in yeah. terms of line items or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of money there, but it's it's 180,000 there, 120,000 there, or whatever. That a, a much better way of of organizing that such that you can get a handle on the money that's in the budget, and then translate that very quickly into this is what we expect to do. I I think he he made a lot of progress. Yeah. Last year as we went through, you know, November and December. The charts, yeah. But but I I think if if we can set an objective on it doesn't change the amount, but on. Um, you know, uh, organizing that and, and articulating it, um, you know, continue to improve is the improvement that started to show up last year. I think right. that would be helpful. So, uh, do we kind of? I think we kind of have a concept here, and it's more to see. I, do, the I would like to get. I would like to get the manager's view on yep. whether on whether a staying to the default budget, using the concept <coughs> that if we can save here, you can you can spend it over there. Approach uh, is, is practical. Does it make I any agree. logical sense to the manager? Because he's the one who we're going to yell agree. at if it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. You do. Good morning, you friend. No, <laughs> uh, the default budget. I look at the default budget as the sort of the, the safety net, the, the safeguard. Uh, if all else fails, that's what you're going to have to spend. That's the base, and I think you need to start from some base. You can't. I can't tell you what the budget's going to look like because it hasn't been submitted to me yet. So the only one we can calculate right now is a default. And to use that as an example to establish where you think you're going to be, even though it's going to need a little bit of uh, finesse later on because of we don't know all the changes that are going to go into it, it's better than having nothing to guess where you're going to be. So yeah, I think you have to use it as a yardstick to begin the process. I don't think you have a choice. Because the budget for next year will not be the same as the budget for this year. It cannot be. Oh, wouldn't expect it to be. So you've got to use the default. Wouldn't expect it to be line item by line item. But overall, we, you, can, you can take the number and say, this is, this is what my limit is. I can take $100,000 from this department and, and budget it in a different department in 2013. Well, yeah, but it, when you come to the bottom line, which it allows you to set different priorities, but you're in, a, but it's a very tight cap that you have on well, setting those. What priorities. you're telling me is that you would like to see a budget that's tight, and in order to get there, you need to know to start what the default would be, right? Because that's going to be the minimum you're going to have. It's also going to be the maximum you're going to have. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, so it's a pretty established figure. Now, as I say, there may be a couple little adjustments in there, depending on what happens with health insurance and things, and, and retirement and things like that. But they change both sides. They do. So it's it's not going to be a big adjustment. It's going to be minor uh, over the the entire scheme of the budget. So that gives you a yardstick to start planning with. And I think the default is a good one to give you a yardstick to start planning with because that's going to be both your minimum and maximum. The place to go. And I like the idea because, like Richard suggested, we could find some cost saving ideas over here to offset some of these infrastructure ideas that you have over there. I think we can go hand in hand with that. Default, plus or minus. All has to come out the default, period. But it, but it allows limited amount of room for the manager and the department heads to change some, pri oh, you know, sure. some priorities within the allocation of. And each department head can move back and forth with another department head. They <coughs> need you to shuffle things around. I well, have no problem with it. You really need a true zero-based budget where everybody yeah. starts to, to structure the budget from nothing. Right. More or less. More or less. These are the functions that we perform. Are they still necessary? Right. You need to review every function and determine whether or not it's still worth performing. It. That'll keep you busy for the summer. <coughs> Give us a couple of days worth of work. Um, is June the first? I mean, not, I, I'm not sure if we need to know. If we, if if this if this goal, Dick, is just structured that it says we're gonna 
we're not we're going to limit the uh, proposed 2013 operating budget to the default budget. Are you comfortable with or the default amount? Are you comfortable with that as the goal? Yeah. Do we need to do we care when we find out what the default number is? Because you had mentioned that. How long will I, it take I, you I, to determine that? Mike's out for two weeks. Yes, right. I, I, I think I think we do care. Okay, um, and I think sooner is better than later. Yes, understanding that it, it's not, you know, the same level of effort that goes into doing the default when it's a final thing we approve right. and submitted to DRA and the whole bit. Because I think what you get out of that is going to affect your objective. If is you think if you think you're looking at a three or a four percent increase with with the default over this year's budget right. as opposed to a one or a two percent increase. I, I think you may approach things differently, both in terms of the direction that we give Fred and the and on a second level and the way Fred approaches it with the department head. So right. I think sooner is better than later and my my experience with Mike is if you ask him for something like that you generally get it re pretty quick and, and at a pretty decent quality level. So yeah, he's out for two weeks, so uh, probably he probably won't be in until May. The th he'll probably defer when he's in until the what twenty first of May, you think? Yeah, end of May is fine. So. Well, we're not. Yeah, the I, 28th, I, so presumably I, it'll I, be the twenty first. Twenty first would be my strike date. Yeah, so he can do the April financial statements plus the uh, draft oh. default on the twenty first. Bless you. Oh, that's gonna be pretty tight though, because he always we always give a little space on the on the financials from each month. Well, at least we used to. Well, he is going to be out, so. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. The priority here, though, is to establish the default. Right. Why don't we shoot for the 4th of June? I, I think we just I think we just asked Mike to do it as expeditiously as possible. Okay. And he's, yeah. you know, to be honest with you, there's a lot of things, I think, in, in Mike's area of responsibility that he's the only guy that does them. He can't, he right. can't, you know, so I. I well, he can use his. Uh, he can, if he if he's ready by the time he's in with the April financials, is or is he going to skip April and just uh, is was it was his next time in going to be for the for April and May? Do, you, uh, do we know? It's probably going to be for April and May. Okay, so it might be sometime in June. Yeah, mm. but my suggestion your best, to you is the twenty first. Twenty first looks like a good day okay. because we're not meeting the twenty eighth. Five twenty one. Okay, so did you want to yep, discuss third, another goal? The the third piece.